Manchester United 2, Newcastle United 0. And congratulations to Manchester United. They've officially won the Carabao Cup. Their first trophy since 2017, I believe. And the first of Ten Hag's reign at Man United. As always, let me know your thoughts on the match in the comment section down below. I'd absolutely love to hear it, especially you Man United fans. How are you feeling? Are you buzzing after winning your first trophy in quite a while now? And what's your hopes for the seasons? And you Newcastle fans as well, I hope you're not too downbeat despite the fact that you didn't win today. It's still been an amazing season for you lot so far. And if you're new around here and you love football-related content, this is the place for you. Make sure you subscribe down below my road to 2,000 subscribers. What can I say about this game, man? I mean, I was going into it and I was really looking forward to it because there was implications for both sides. I mean, we've seen teams like Man City win the Carabao Cup in recent years. I've just been like, okay, great, another trophy for Man City. But here we have two teams that really needed this trophy. I mean, for Newcastle United... They haven't won a domestic trophy since the 50s, I think. It's been donkey's years. For a club, the stature of Newcastle United, that is not good enough. Of course, they've had the new uh, bid, the new takeover come in from the Saudi Arabians, the richest club in world football now, and they've completely turned a corner. Eddie Howe there's done a fantastic job. They're flying this season on course to potentially make Champions League football, if not that, at least European football. And a trophy for their fans would... Be, literally be the icing on the cake for them unfortunately it didn't go that way but on the flip side you have manchester united they haven't won a trophy since 2017 of course if you talk about the stature of newcastle united <laughs> manchester united is even a level above that they are arguably the biggest club in england the fact they haven't won a trophy in six years before today it's it's big it's big eric ten has come in of course they've had previous managers since the departure of Sir alex ferguson that haven't really nailed down the team and haven't really nailed down a consistent run and no one's really looked like a manager that's of Manchester United's ilk since Sir Alex Ferguson left. But Eric Ten Hag certainly looks that way. I said it from before. This is a brilliant manager Manchester United have got. Eric Ten Hag is a world-class manager, man. In all facets, I think he's unbelievable. I really do. I've said it before in this channel. Everything from the way he handled the Ronaldo situation, the Maguire situation. He handles himself with such poise. He articulates himself so intelligently. He has confidence in what he says. What he says as well holds ground. Like, you listen to Ten Hag and you believe what he says and you respect him. His decisions on the field, tactics. Sometimes he does stuff and I'm thinking, what is he doing here? But it works. Even today, making the sub at half-time. One second for Dallo. Brilliant substitution, man. I mean, obviously, it, it would be kind of obvious to everyone because Dallo was getting cooked by St. Maxman. But he still made it. Then the second half as well, brings on Sabitza to add more steel into that midfield, man. Eric Ten Hag is an outstanding manager and for me he deserves this trophy him and Manchester United completely deserve this Carabao Cup trophy and it's so big for them man because it's typified how United have done really he started the two games Ten Hag and it was really really uh, unfortunate for him they lost to Brighton they lost to Brentford and the heat was already on him but he stuck to his guns he remained confident he galvanized the players and since then they've been on top top form if we take away those first two games of Premier League season Manchester United would be on top of Man City right now and pushing Arsenal. I think they might even be in first, but Arsenal have a game in hand. That is how good United have been since those first two games where they lost both to Brighton and Brentford. United are looking really good. They're solid. They're, they're played on all four fronts now. I mean, they're up, Carabao Cup's finished and they've won the trophy, but they're still in the FA Cup, still in the Europa League, still in the Premier League. This is a really good Manchester United team and they've got a really solid foundation here of Eric Ten Hag. And this game, they showed exactly what it's like to play for Manchester United and play under Eric Ten Hag. They were not at their best today. Newcastle United, of course, they're coming. They're trying to win their first trophy in, what, 70, 80 years. They came with a threat and they came on the front foot and they looked exciting and they looked dangerous. But Manchester United stayed in the game. They nullified all the attacks and they took their chances on the counter and took their chances when it came. And their big players stood up and were counted. Casemiro. When they signed this man, I'm going to be completely honest, yeah? I know Casemiro is a top quality footballer. He's one... How many Champions League for Real Madrid? He's won maybe five, six, I want to say, for Real Madrid. He's won 10 of 12 finals he's been in. The brother is a born and bred winner. My thing was, he's what, getting, he's above 30 years old in age. Is he just coming for a paycheck? We know he'd be on enormous wages at Manchester United. And is he just kind of a signing that will do well for one or two seasons, not long term? Well, whether, whether that's the case or not, you have to say Casemiro is making an impact right here and now. Today, he was immense. Not only did he get the first goal for Manchester United with a brilliant header off the Luke Shaw cross, he was just here, there and everywhere, man. Intercepting, always looking to receive the ball and pass it on. 
getting the crowd involved at the right times, knowing when to slow down the play, knowing when to speed up the play. He was just a calm head in a really intense football match and he typified everything about Manchester United. Other performers in there, Marcus Rashford, for me, the most informed player in world football right now. This man cannot stop scoring. Again, he gets on the score sheet. I don't believe that it's actually going to go down in his goal. It might go down as a Botman own goal. But either way, he's the one that strikes it. The effect of Botman took it away from Karius, unfortunately for him, and that made it 2-0 United. And that's exactly what top teams do. I watched United a couple of weeks back against Leeds United away from home. They weren't in that game. They weren't very good. I thought Leeds United dominated. But two goals with 10 minutes left and they win the game against Leicester City the week before. The first half, the first 30 to 40 minutes, it was all Leicester. David De Gea kept them in the match. But the game finished 3-0. You're looking at it thinking, how was that match finished 3-0? United were completely dogged in that first half. But... Good teams stay in the game and they know they're not going to dominate from minute 1 to 90. Manchester United, they're not good enough to do that. But what they have got is they've got match winners and they've got a spine in that team. And they've got solid players throughout. They haven't got a brilliant squad. I don't think every single player in that team is world class. But they've got world class players and players on top form in the right positions. Their centre-backs, Martinez and Varane, solid. Their CDM Casemiro, solid. Bruno Fernandes, a maestro, a playmaker, solid. Marcus Rashford, again, one of those informed players in world football. And David De Gea's keeping shots out. That is all you need. They've got the foundations there. The goalkeeper, the centre-backs, the CDM, the playmaker and the goal scorer. Manchester United have that and it's taken them so, so far this season, man. It's typified that, again, this performance. Look, Manchester United are not of the quality of Arsenal Man City this season. But it's going to their advantage because a lot of teams are not treating them with as much respect as they do treat Arsenal Man City. A lot of teams play Arsenal Man City and they just sit back in the low block and they basically just try and get a nil-nil or draw. That's it. Against Man United, teams actually go for Man United. That they think, oh, we've got a chance. And then Manchester United hurt them on the counter-attack, just like today. So I think, although Man United are on top form right now and this is showed again today, maybe as they go on and they keep performing like this, teams might actually start to respect them to the same level that they respect Arsenal Man City in terms of ball playing ability and start to sit off and play low blocks and then we have to see whether Manchester United can compete with that because it's all good winning uh, winning games by scoring on the counter attack like they did against Leeds and even a couple times here today against Newcastle I know one was from a set piece but when teams play a low block can Manchester United compete with that only time will tell but for now they're looking good they're on top form they're fighting on all fronts and they're looking really good Newcastle United, I do have to say commiserations, man. I feel for their fans. I saw a few of them actually as I was coming in because obviously I live around London, but I, was, I commuted to Birmingham today. I saw a few of their fans and they were looking really excited for this match. Their first cup final in a while. Of course, they've had a long trophy drought. And look, they can't look at their players and think they let them down because I don't think the, man, the Newcastle United players let them down by any stretch of the imagination. Newcastle played well. They fought for it and not one of those players... They left everything on the pitch. That's what they did, man. They left everything on the pitch. Not one of those players can leave there with their... Every single one, sorry, can leave there with their head held high. It's not like any of them bottled it or weren't up for the fight. They were completely up for the fight. It's just Manchester United were more clinical and they better better tactician, maybe. Were more street-wise, were more street-smart and they took their chances at the end of the day. It's exactly what happened. Newcastle kind of ran out of steam towards the end. But it is what it is for that for them, man. I mean, they're definitely a team on the up. This is their first final of potentially many under this new Saudi Arabian ownership. So I wouldn't be too distraught if I was in, if I was a Newcastle United fan. Keep up with the season. The thing they need to do is just bounce back from here. They can't let this loss derail their season now because they're in a brilliant vein of vein of form. I guess I mean not current vein of form, but as the season's gone on, this if you take the season overall as a whole, Newcastle done really well. They're fighting for the Champions League places. They're hoping to secure any Europe. To be fair, even if it's Europa Conference League, I mean, it kind of looked like a bit of a bottle job from where they were before the World Cup. But even if they secure any European football, that is a W for Newcastle United Football Club. Because a few seasons ago, they were in the Championship. Let's not forget that. They've come up now. They're holding their own in the Premier League. And they're looking like a fight for any of the big teams. And even against Liverpool the other week, man, I know they lost that game and they were down to 10 men. But they showed that they can fight. Because they, they look good. With 10 men, they were still beating Liverpool. They were still... When I say beating Liverpool, like they were still fighting, they were still creating chances, they were still being aggressive. Newcastle was a solid team, man, and this loss does not define them. You can't just look at this loss and go, oh, Manchester United, classic, beat Newcastle. 
No, Newcastle played well, man. If you look at the expected goals, I haven't seen the stats, but I wouldn't be surprised if Newcastle had more expected goals, more possession, etc. They played really well. It's just one of those things where United were just street smart and they got the result. And that's just Manchester United in a nutshell under Eric Ten Hag. They're a smart, smart football team. They're not pushovers anymore like they have been in recent history. But overall, congratulations to Manchester United. They do win the Carabao Cup in. It was an, it was an enjoyable final. It wasn't one of the most enjoyable but for Manchester United fans, they won't care. They get a trophy on Derek Ten Hag. It's been an amazing season. They're still in the title race with Arsenal Man City. They're still in the Europa League as well and the FA Cup. So maybe it's one trophy or potentially one more or maybe two more or maybe three more for Eric Ten Hag this season. But overall, let me know your thoughts on the match in the comment section down below. I'd absolutely love to hear it. And if you're new around here and you love football-related content, this is the place for you. Make sure you subscribe down below on my Road to 2000 subscribers. I've been my football. Hope to see you all in my next video.